thing. But what I'm going to do is make up a another one. I got a piece of steel somewhere around here. Okay. I got a piece of pipe that was just laying around and it goes through the spindle of the Atlas lathe. So I got this part here. It's it's just something I made and I was I, I knurled it and then I for some reason cut that off. But it's a perfect match for this piece of pipe. As a matter of fact, there's a little burr on that end, it won't even be on there, but it's a perfect match for that. So I can just stick that right on there. And uh, I can pin it or I might just Loctite it. It doesn't really matter. Probably Loctite it. Um, so all I got to do, I got a piece of stock that I use for different fixtures making things. I'll chuck that up in the three jaw. Turn back enough to grip for this to go up on there. And then put the threads on. It says that the 5C, they call it D dimension, is internal thread. Uh, 1 inch 042 by 24 right hand thread which is what these are so I don't know how much I got on there this is this is inch and a half so I gotta take about a half inch off the OD of this put a thread on it and I don't really need a whole lot of thread because in there anyway I'm not gonna do that tonight I'll probably start on that in the morning I'll pick up this video in the morning I'll pick so I have put a 5,000 speed on it. Okay, let's take it in until it touches. Until we're running. Alright, let's take 50,000. For my machine, that's 25 on a side. 5,000 speed. Okay, long stringer. Okay, that is to be devoutly avoided. It's a mess. Okay, so this tool has a mild chip breaker on it. It also has a, a negative lead. So let's see how that one does at 5,000 feet. We're going to need more aggressive of chip breaker. Okay. Now, try to get a ground a more aggressive chip breaker. Now, I should say that there are some say that there are some materials that it's really really difficult to break a chip. Sometimes you just can't. Especially at a 5000 speed. We'll try this and then we'll try a carbide. Okay, there we go. We're breaking a chip now. That's a little more to my liking. So let's cut that line. We got, we got like um, 300,000 to come off of there. There's going to be a cap to go on there, so I'm only going to thread it back halfway. Let's thread it to there. So from here up, I need to take another, I need to take 100,000, which is 50 on my dial. Take that in a couple of passes. I didn't think that was enough. 45. I'm going to leave it like that because I'm going to... Sorry about that. I got in a hurry and I started cutting the threads already. Alright, let's continue on. Hmm, tightens up after. 
turn. We don't need much more. We don't want it too tight and we don't want it too loose. I think we need to hit that with a file. I don't think I can get any better than that. Goes on nice and easy. So what I'm doing here is I'm uh, I'm just going to run an angle inside of there. I'm thinking maybe if one day I might want to put a vacuum on it and pull the chips through and you know get them out of there. So a little lead angle might help the chips to go in there better. Okay, so if it's all still focused in you should be able to see there's a nice little lead angle on there. Okay, so now I'll take it over to the table. Alright, so I got the bar in it. Okay, not very big. Ain't many chips going through that, but it satisfies me and that's all that matters. Alright, so yesterday I started work, I made this part here, it's a hollow tube with a fitting on it, um, it fits into the back of a 5C collet. Now this one here, I put this here and you can see what I'm talking about, okay, it just screws out of there. This is for a stop. Okay, I made this up. It's got 24 threads. Diameter is uh, 1 inch 042. So I made this. Okay, this just screws into the bottom of the collet. Okay, the back of the collet rather. The reason I made that was this holder which by the way is I really love this thing it's great it runs good it works good everything's good about it except for the fact that the screw the, you turn the key and the key turns a scroll just like in a three jaw chuck and it threads up this threads this uh, it threads here and it pulls this up tight but the scroll ends at the same point where this does Right at, right at that point there. So if you were to be doing a tapping operation, let's say, the chips would go down in, go through the collet, and then come out right at that mating surface where the, where the scroll goes around. Uh, I'll try to get a, a video of it spinning in there. Um, and so I thought what I would do was make up a a shaft. Most of the ones I've ever used have a shaft that goes all a tube that goes all the way through, and then normally there's a, a cantilever collet, cam over collet. Uh, I wanted to braze this, so I'm not very good at brazing. So I put the 
tapered uh, pin in there and I swaged that out and then I Loctite, I just Loctited it in place. I'm going to put this up. Uh, I, I cut this on an angle and it was the last thing I did so the lathe is still set at the angle. So all I have to do is put it up there and take a cut on it. So I'll move the camera over there and we'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so the idea of this angle is if I want to put a vacuum, this is this tube is sticking out past the back here. So if I, if I want to make a fixture and put a vacuum on there and I can suck those chips out of there. I want a nice taper surface, uh, like uh, for a guide, a nice transition there. All right. All right, so that took care of that. I'll put that on there. Real nice. Real happy with that. So I'll make a lock collar for it later, but for now, that looks good. I'm happy. Now, of course, the chips could still come out. Another thing, too, I'm going to have to make a, I'll make a rubber, make a rubber plug to put in there so that when I take, loosen it from here and slide it all the way out, the chips don't come out and, and defeat what I made it for. But I put a little rubber plug in there. And like I say, also I could put the vacuum to it and maybe suck some things out of there. I, I don't know if I'll ever cut an internal, you know, something through bore to where the chips could get in there or not. But I just wanted to make it. Now I have it. So uh, I'm going to move on to something else. Um, when I threaded that, whenever I thread anything, I always... Um, I always use my little stop. Okay, so that's a running nail. Okay, so all it has is a carriage bolt through there that I can use to adjust. And I actually have a hook made for this. So, um, yeah, I have a little piece that bolts on there. It's got a screw that can go into the the screw where the little pan is that covers the cross feed screw to the, the cross screw so that I can hook it to that and then I can set these stops to an in and an out position maybe I'll put it on there one day or maybe I'll put it on there and show you um, and the way I made this I think I got the idea from the book the way I made this I took and I actually took my time with this and it was, it was pretty tedious to make this. I got this little foot here that I made. Three eight, I'm pretty sure it's a 3 8 fine thread on it. And then I, I cut this out. I think I put an end mill down in there and I walked it over just a little bit. And then what I did was I put it all together and I put a washer as I was making it, I put a washer under there to hold that up like that when I cut the dovetail. Yeah, so that it was up like that when I cut the dovetail. It was actually protruding at the top. So now with, when I take the washer out, then I can lock. And it locks beautifully on that way. And I haven't seen any sign of any damage. My concern was if I made one that just squeezed, that just squeezed together it would um, damage the ways or something. This kind of pulls, this kind of pulls up on the way, and you don't need a whole lot of pressure to uh, to lock it really tight. So let me go over there and let me see if I can find, let me see if I can find the part that I made for this and show you what I was talking about as far as being able to use it for an in and out position. Um. And I can bolt right on to there. I don't think I got to go through all of this. You, you understand what it is. Okay. Okay, so the little bolt goes in there.
There we go. Anyway, you know when it's on camera, it ain't going to go. Anyway, you get the picture. Doesn't want to go in, and I'm not, I'm not going to try to get a Allen wrench in there. But you get the point. Now, let's see, I got two nylocks on there. So I can give myself an out position and an in position. This really works good for threading. Actually, that's probably where I, what I should use when I thread. Um, just lock this down. As I say, all it takes is just the tiniest. All it takes really is the tiniest bit of pressure. And that thing's as solid as a rock. and shake the whole lead with it. And to release it, I just take it up till it's even. Give it a little tap. And you can see it comes right loose. Okay, anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Shot up my little stop that I made. Um, I'll zoom in on it as I talk about it, I guess. So, the real usefulness of this guy is when you're threading, internal threading, a very small hole, you can set this back side. You take the, uh, when you've made your pass and you take the tool out and you, and you got a very small hole if you're not careful you'll hit the other side of the part so I set that for there and then I come back out and then I'll have this side set to bring into zero and you take your feed on your compound and then that way it keeps you you know it's, it's very when you're in a very small tight place like that it's easy to get flustered and this just makes it a lot easier you uh, like I say you just uh, you have you use both positions. You have out for your thread depth, your zero point of your thread, and then you have your in to keep you from banging the back wall. That's a very useful. It's, it's a very useful uh, item. I use it all the time. It's worthwhile making one. It's just a piece of one inch key stock uh, with dovetails cut in it. Uh, okay, so let me uh, zoom back out. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll give you a little preview of the next one. Uh, probably saw I had an inch and a half bolt over here. I thought it was an inch and a half eight, but it was actually an inch and a half six. So I put it up today, and I'll, I'll spin the camera around so you can see. I uh, picked it up. I cut it. It had a high-speed tool in there. Uh, then I went, and because it just it, it grade eight, it ate the, it ate the uh, high-speed right up. So I put a carbide in there, picked it up again, and ran a couple passes with the carbide. And then I went back to the high-speed steel because my carbide insert only is good for so much depth. And the thread was actually too too deep. Like I say, the footage is already shot. I just got to edit it, and that'll be my next video. Anyway, I thank you all for, uh, for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.